Hi, my name is Don Schomburg. I'm the executive chef at Mayette's Garden and Grill here in Kane Garden Bay, Tortola. Today we just finished doing our first annual underwater beach cleanup to clean up all the unwanted trash here in Kane Garden Bay. Um, we have a lot of help and support from some of the local businesses. Um, Joost Van Dyke Scuba was here. Um, Project Aware through Patty was here. Uh, Sail Caribbean Divers. Um, the Joost Van Dyke Preservation Society. Um, we also had the Reef Guardians were here. Uh, Reef Guardians came out and um, along with helping us clean up trash, they also helped us clean up the lionfish population that were swimming on the reefs. Uh, the money raised from today's event is going to go to support Project AWARE, which is an international organization designed to clean the world's oceans. It's sponsored through PADI, which is another dive organization. Um, we. We put this together in conjunction with Sail Caribbean divers who have, who have taken their time and effort to help us plan that aspect of it. Um, along with the dive and the benefits, we have a raffle um, to raise extra funds. Um, the overall event was very successful. Um, we, um, we couldn't have asked for a better turnout. We had uh, 65 divers who uh, showed up and volunteered, as well as numerous other volunteers to help us put on the event who stayed on shore. Um, we, we are anticipating next year's event to be uh, even more successful. Um, and we're hoping that come mid-October to early November we will, be we will be doing a second event in um, Cooper Island and we'll be starting our first annual Cooper Island event. I'd like to, I'd like to thank a few people because um, without, the, without their help uh, this event couldn't have happened at all. I mean, it, it was definitely more than a one-person show. Um, I got to thank um, Colin at Yost Van Dyke Scuba. Um, he, he put a lot of effort, he brought a boat over, he brought over tons of scuba tanks uh, for everybody to use and participate with free. Um, he helped, uh, he used his boat to help pull out the larger pieces of trash and bring them to shore. Um, I couldn't have done this without Sail Caribbean Divers who, um, one, hooked us up with Project Aware, but they also did all the paperwork and all of the cataloging of the, of, of the stuff, that, the trash that we pulled out. Um, I couldn't have done it without the Reef Guardians who came and not just did they educate us on, on how to um, collect and mark the, the lionfish, but they also um, were kind enough to show us how to clean the lionfish and, um, and, and then allowed us to have the, the lionfish tasting at the end of the, at, during, during our big cleanup. Um, I would like to thank um, some, some people that donated to us, um, Soul Petroleum who couldn't participate but they did donate a lot of the funds that made, um, made all this event happen as, as so did um, uh, Super Value, um, they, they donated a large chunk of food as well. And then obviously last but not least um, Dive Zero uh, who did all of our underwater filming and um, the making of this video so that we can um, share it with the world and show them how the BVIs are, are trying to go green and clean up our environment. Um, and that's about it. I think um, now I'm gonna take you into the kitchen and we're gonna go with Jerry from the Reef Guardians and we're gonna learn the proper way to, to clean a lionfish, um, what not to touch on a lionfish. And then I'm gonna show you a quick and simple recipe for um, fish and chips made with the lionfish so that when you're out there spearing them on your local reef uh, you'll know what to do with them when you get them back to your house or your boat or the beach or wherever you feel like cooking them up okay so um, again thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you at our next uh, next beach cleanup bye have you seen this fish if you have report it immediately to reef guardians if you've seen this fish, it's also important to mark where you've seen the fish. You mark it by getting one of these lionfish markers, which has a weight, some marking tape, and a cork, and you drop it on the coral reef where you've seen the fish. This will enable us to find the fish easier when we go back. Now, how do we know where to go? You've got to report the fish. Where do you report it? Reef Guardians BVI. That's our Facebook page. ReefGuardians.com is our website. 
When you see a lionfish, you report it. Now what's the third part of this? Remove it. We're going to remove the fish. How are we going to remove it? We're going to come by with one of our pole spears and a lionfish containment unit. We spear the lionfish, then we stick them in the containment unit to bring them home, and then we eat them. If we can't eat them, then we feed them to the morays or the sharks. Everything that we've caught on the north side is good to eat. Everything on the south side could possibly have cigatera. Here we go, opening the lionfish containment unit. Let's see, what do we have inside? Oh, lionfish! And nobody had to touch them as yet, which is a good thing. So there we have it, lionfish. And we'll put the containment unit over the side. Okay, now, the thing with the lionfish, okay, is there's several poisonous spines, uh, venomous spines, they're venomous spines. The fish itself is not poisonous, it's very good to eat. The venom gland is located at the base of the spine. So as long as you cut the spines off, it's good to handle, and you can make sushi out of them, you can make ceviche out of them, you can fillet them, you can fry them. They make great lionfish and chips. They make great bake, uh, olive oil. You're a chef, you know good recipes for fish. They taste a lot like hog snapper and, and regular snapper. It's important that when we handle the lionfish, we do not in any way, shape, or form touch the dorsal spines. Okay. I like to get them inside the lip, inside the mouth, and there's nothing in there that can hurt you. The, the lionfish mate, and they swim to the surface, and they lay eggs on the surface. They lay 30,000 eggs every four days. And they mate all year long, and they can grow as big as nine inches in one year. A lionfish can eat, a lionfish can eat another fish that's 75% its own body size and it does that by just swallowing it whole they have here at their nostril they have at their nostril they have water glands that shoot water out to distract their prey so their prey turns and faces the lionfish and then the lionfish eats it whole head on whereas he can't eat the fish sideways he has to eat him head on so he shoots him with the water out of his nose to get the lionfish to turn so you can see the nose there flared. Now, a lionfish has 13 dorsal spines that are, that are venomous. They're like little needles. Touching the side of the needle doesn't hurt you. Touching the point of the needle will. So, let me see one of your knives. Alright, and I'm going to pull back one of these spines here. And I want to just go down the tip I just want to run down the tip of the, I just want to expose under the little skin. See the sharp needle? Yeah. So this needle is hollow, and this is the delivery mechanism for the venom. Sweet. So the venom comes out that needle, and the venom gland is, is contained here. There are 13 dorsal spines with venom. This pectoral fin has no venom in it at all, so it's safe to grab it here. The bottom pectoral fin has one venom gland right there. See that little one? Yeah. There's one venom gland, one venom gland right there. The anal fin has three venom glands on it. And the anal fin venom, venom glands are here. One, two, three. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so best, best handled with care. Gloves are always a good idea. I left mine in the boat, but since we're very careful about how we touch them, um, I find it's easier before you let any kitchen staff handle them. If you have an experienced person that's gonna fillet and clean the fish, then I feel it's better to just cut all the fins off and then anybody can handle the fish just like any other fish. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna take a nice pair of shears, heavy duty scissors, heavy duty scissors. just snippity snip, okay.
biggest the lionfish can grow is 18 inches in the Pacific Ocean. The biggest that they've been found in the Virgin Islands in St. Thomas and St. Croix is 21 and 22 inches. This fish here is approximately 9 to 10 inches. So this is an adult, these are all adult breeding size fish. This fish, of all the fish, would be the, the skeptical if it was a breeding size yet, but most likely is because it's just about six inches. Okay, so now I'm going to, I've got the, um, I've got to cut the, the top, the, the dorsals and the tail. There are no venomous spines in the tail fin there. There are one, there's three venomous spines on this bottom, uh, on this bottom anal fin. And then there's 13 venomous spines across the dorsal. So this is really the, the, the area where a lot of people getting poked at is on this dorsal. So if you're cutting, be very aware of what you're doing. Don't, don't force the spine into your hand with the, while you're doing the scissor cut. You need to really pay attention. Very careful. And, um, an ounce of prevention goes a long way. And uh, you certainly don't want to let these spines go anywhere where somebody could stand on them or step them. Even though the spines have been disconnected from the fish, if there's still venom in the, in the spine itself or on the tip, you will get envenomated and it will hurt. Okay, so now what we have here is a clean fish. He's very easy now to handle. Now, just like a snapper or any other fish with scales, um, it's always a good idea to we've got to get rid of the scales because we're going to cook them up and eat them nice. They started out eating the reef cleaner fish and the small juvenile open water fish that they found on the reef environment. The lionfish have changed their diet to eat almost anything on the reef. They will eat crustaceans, crabs, lobster, mollusks, clams, sea urchins, anything that is edible, they will eat it. If it fits in their mouth, they're likely to swallow it. Now what I'm going to do is gut him. And he has a large bulge in his stomach. This means that he may have eaten recently. Alright? got a baby. No, they don't have baby. They lay eggs. He has an air sac. It could have been his air sac because we pulled him up from the depth. It could have been an air sac. You can just pull that out like you do like a cleaner fish. Just, just like a clean and regular fish. Sometimes it's even easier just to go right here behind the the head, just pull, just pull the whole head right off, okay? And then there we have it. Here's what he had to eat. Look at that. Shrimp. Two shrimp. So like I was saying earlier, the lionfish have changed their diet to accommodate all kinds of crustaceans. Now this guy just ate two really nice sized little cleaner shrimp on the reef. These guys are almost big enough to eat. So you see how he ate the crustaceans there. He ate the cleaner fish. He just ate these probably yesterday or this morning. So this little greedy guy was really hungry and uh, he's been cleaning up the reef, unfortunately. This lionfish is now what I would call clean and ready for the chef to do his magic. Yeah, absolutely. What am I going to do with it? So you're just going through the bones? Yeah, I'm just going down to the spine and trying to pull out the bones out of the middle. So you want to basically you're going to end up with two fillets and one on either side. Because they're a smaller fish, it takes a little bit more, a little bit more tedious work, but you got the right hang of it. So there you have it. And then you can just get the bone out of that one and you're done. We're going to start with just a little seasoning. A little salt and pepper, just for flavor. And then we're going to dredge it in flour. And that's going to make our batter stick. Which is just a simple tempura. And then we'll bring that over to the fryer. Give that a second to cook. Give it a shake, give that a minute, and uh, we should have some fish and chips. Okay, so these are the, the lion fish that we did. this with the chip and a little bit of coleslaw.
fish and chips lionfish style. Mmm, that looks scrumptious. Mm. Mm. Beautiful white flaky fish. Mm. Super moist. Mm. Can't get any better than that. Nice, look at that. Beautiful. Flake, right, nice, flake fish. Mm. Mm. Right? Huh? That's the way it's gonna be. That's good. One of the questions I always get asked is why did I choose Kang Garden Bay over all the other bays and uh, coves in the British Virgin Islands where we're at? And I tell them it's because this is where I live. And um, we have a beautiful reef behind me that um, I don't know if you can make it out in the video, but it stretches from one end of the bay all the way to the other with just a little channel that goes through. And it is by far one of the best snorkeling reefs um, that's, that you can get to from, you know, just from the beach. You just go down to the beach and snorkel out to it. And it's great because there's more eels, there's octopus, there's, um, there's reef squid all over the place out there. Um, there's huge puffer fish, there's rays, there's dolphin. Um, just about a week ago there was um, three whales. Actually one was a baby whale, so probably two whales and a baby that were swimming around the sailboats out there and that swam with scuba divers and snorkelers for probably a good two hours before they decided to move on. Um, the, the reef itself is, is making a comeback. It's, it, it, it's, it's coming back from all the storms and damage that it's had, but it is making a comeback. And what we're finding is that um, um, there's a lot of trash from the sailboats, a lot of, um, a lot of plastic bags, towels, shirts, lawn chairs that have get accidentally fall overboard that people just leave and they don't bring back in. And so um, one of the things I was talking to some of my friends about, which is how this dive event came to be, was that we'd go out and we'd just clean up that trash. It'll um, clean up the waters a little bit and then more fish will come back to the area. The more fish that come back to the area, the more um, people will want to dive it, the more beautiful it'll be and the more beautiful it'll make Kane Garden Bay, which again is where I live and it's what, what the ultimate goal is, is to make the beautiful BBIs even more beautiful. And um, that's what, um, with this cleanup and with the future cleanups is uh, just a better and more beautiful BVI.